Yeehaw. All right. This is well. Hello. All right. Let's go permissions. Let's make this bad boy open to the public. Save changes. Uh, do not let them speak. Do not let them <laughs> video. Oh, my. Oh, my. They're going fast. <laughs> Uh-oh, people have speaking perms. I know. I yeah, you should change that. Yeah, you I might want to change that. that man. I, I will. Hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> Someone just screamed like Homer Simpson. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah, that was totally a Homer scream. <laughs> <laughs> D57. I'm sorry. I got a server mute. There's no better way to do this. Dang. Bacon, I got a server mute. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. You're supposed to be here. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh, man. Did you guys like that last one? The last segment? How do you guys think it went? That's yeah, a pretty yeah. funny little segment. A pretty funny, yeah, it a was, fun little segment. It, it, instructive. It was instructive. It was instructive. We learned some things. Today, we'll be learning how to doodle and yes. draw pile as well. Yeehaw. You, are you guys yeah. gonna be drawn together? Did you ever decide on that? Yeah, uh, we're we're gonna share the draw pile gonna, with each other. Yeah. Are you going to Not stream? True. Are you gonna stream as well, Bacon? Yeah, I I just have to wait for the draw pile. Got it. Yeah, I'm gonna make it in a bit. I'm gonna show how to make it so that people who don't know how to actually know how to. Yeah, a lot I of people were like. Stream. They were like, "What is draw pile? Can you draw with friends?" Like, yeah, that's the yeah. that's the whole shit. Uh, a lot of people don't know what it is or don't know how to make one. Like, there's uh, a lot of difficulties with making one uh, if you want to host it from your computers. Yeah, I've I've tried making one before. It was like I couldn't find enough information on it. To be able it's to much one. easier to host it to, on the remote servers. That's what we are gonna do. Yeehaw! So this, here we go. We get a quick draw pile but, introduction tutorial. You can draw your friends now. How, isn't that exciting? Especially after yeah. what we just learned. It's just gonna be boobs and feet <laughs> that you're drawing with your <laughs> friends. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I gotta use the bathroom though. I gotta be right back. Okay, right. we'll, we'll set things up. Yeah. yeah, I think we can start now. It looks like people joined already, so I think we can start. So, uh, yeah, how to make a draw pile? You just click session here. Then when you're hosting this session, uh, you enter a title of the room. Ideally, yes, I just set it the same. It's, well, it's just... It's not really important, the password, you can just do whatever. I'm gonna paste the password uh, for bacon. Uh, and you can host it uh, remotely on different servers, actually, so that uh, even if you disconnect, uh, the room won't go down. I usually host them on syntheticdreams.net. Uh, because uh, draw pile servers are quite often uh, full, especially in weekends like this one. So uh, yeah, there is a big chance we wouldn't be able to make uh, a session. So yeah, you just click host, and and it's on. Uh, and wait, I'm gonna copy the address. For bacon. Yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, yeah. If you copy the address and paste it uh, to someone, they can just uh, open it in their browser, and it should take them to to, to the drop pile. Okay. Had to close that one because I had to open a different one. Okay, so uh, we can begin, I guess. I guess who's back? back, yep. back, back, back again, again. And we just got everything Welcome set up. Back. Nice. I streamed that. So I'm gonna make people. Understand. I'm gonna make a second layer so that we can just. Uh, they can. How many layers do you need actually? You I usually the... only use about like two. Yeah, that's the same for me. I don't really need more than two, so. 
Okay. Let's uh, choose. Hello, yep, there everyone. we go. We are here with Bacon and Piku184. Hello, hello. Hello. Yo. You just call me Piku. Piku. Dot newgrounds.com. At newgrounds.com <laughs> slash <laughs> we. <laughs> slash we. Slash we. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, folks. Uh, yeah, Drawpile is the software where you can draw together with other people. Yeah, it's and basically just the... free program that lets you yeah, draw with yeah. your friends. Yeah, there's a bunch of other alternatives, but uh, I think Drawpile is still the most popular one, at least among the people I know. Yeah, people tend to know uh, Drawpile more than any of the other ones. Yeah, yeah. Mm, the other ones are good too, like uh, Aggie, or I think it's Magma Studio. I've only heard basically, of Aggie. Uh, Magma Studio, I think it was called. It's basically the same thing by by the same people. Mm. Uh, it's it looks the same. I I don't really know. I didn't really use it uh, enough to see the differences. And I think Japanese people use Magical Draw too, but it's it's pretty different from what you are used to. The shortcuts are different and stuff. Uh, probably because it takes from like different <laughs> it, programs. It, it, it takes some using too, I, I have to say, but it, it works too if you want to draw with Japanese people. Uh, yeah, not understand that. a word they're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and they're really good at yeah. art. <laughs> You're just like, how are you doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sit there and you just watch them create Mona Lisa and three seconds flat and it's like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> well, drawing is a, is a universal language, I feel like. You know, it just depends on yeah, what yeah. you draw. Even if you can't understand each other, drawing together can be still fun. Just like now, don't you guys feel like you're having fun? Yeah, we're just starting, yeah, yeah. so we're getting getting the rains, but we're getting there. Yeah, just it's still warming up a bit, but oh my god! Right now, okay. I'm trying to find Dan. Hold on. Our processes are quite different. If you guys could describe like those processes, beginning. let's see here. Uh, yeah. Well, I usually try to construct a body like a bit. Uh, sometimes uh, I, I usually try to go for uh, more gesture poses. Like I, I don't define uh, construction the construction really, uh, really well. Like. Like some people do, ma mathematically constructing stuff. I, I don't do that usually. <laughs> uh, I sometimes like uh, two sips in the stream before. He was talking about using boxes and stuff. I sometimes do that when uh, sometimes it's really useful if you need a more difficult perspective. Then yeah, it's it's useful. Definitely, but uh, most of the time I don't really need them to 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 draw. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so as as for me, I just kind of do stuff, and whatever I like, I just kind of add on, and I slowly build up into it. Yeah, I I, I draw and erase a lot. Mm. <laughs> I when see I see I a lot like of your draw something. piles on Twitter, Pico, and they they always seem like like what's most important is like the gesture you're trying to get across. It's like what kind of what kind of pose uh, are you going yeah. for? Yeah, uh, well, I just go for whatever uh, until something works. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of these uh, draw piles you see on Twitter are uh, s sometimes they take uh, like an hour to get done. <laughs> <laughs> to, to to get to something uh, okay looking, so yeah, it, it can be really. 
So in uh, that, in that it, way, you guys have a similar consumed. approach. Like you just kind of draw and then you just edit it, like make it look the way you want it to. Until yeah. yeah. Until and, you know, that, uh, I need to think of a pose that might work. Mm. And if anybody watching my stream, you notice me like flipping the canvas a lot. It's just like a habit that I have that I don't really. Yeah, I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to maybe, make sure that I get it on both angles. Maybe, maybe even uh, way too often because flipping a canvas is something you use to uh, to see the mistakes your brain doesn't see because it gets used to them. Uh, yeah, so, I see a lot uh, of people who have like a an issue where they tend to draw everything at like an angle, like slightly angled to the left or right. Yeah, because yeah, that's, yeah. that's just how their eye sees it. So yeah, flipping the there, canvas there, a bunch. There is a bias in your brain. So if you flip a canvas, you can see if you've made like, uh, if you draw like a square, you can see if you messed up or not. It, yeah. it is useful, but if you do that too often, then your brain gets used to both of the sides and you might not catch all of the mistakes you, you've done. Like, so yeah. Yeah. So you gotta it, use it sparingly, best. but yeah, yeah. It's best to use it sparingly. It's not like something. Yeah. Every stroke you do, you just flip the canvas. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> is this good? Is, is this angle right? I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> is that the right angle or not? <laughs> So where's the inspiration coming for these these doodles right now? With these quick drawings, where's that coming that, from? Something that's coming up from my head. That's pretty much it. That's it. Yeah, same for mine. I mean, sometimes I do use references uh, for the pose or like uh, whatever I I need. Honestly, like a design maybe. But uh, when it comes to draw piles, I usually try to. Uh, go from imaginations that I can practice that. That's wild. When you, I draw in the, What like, do you think uh, you got to that point to where you could just draw from imagination? Uh, I mean, honestly, it's difficult to say. Uh, it just You just need to do it. You need to draw both uh, from reference and uh, and Try to draw from imagination too, so that uh, and try to apply what you've learned drawing from reference. Nice. And at some point, it just starts to work out. Of course, uh, there is nothing wrong if we, you keep using references because uh, there is a lot uh, when drawing. There is a lot you need to keep your eye on. Even if it's for a part of your drawing, it's sometimes good to use a ref. I like how you both went with your comfort characters. You just go straight to your OCs. Like, that's what... Yeah! <laughs> so, if for I'm anyone in the... chat, you gotta design an OC, and then you can just draw them doing whatever, whenever, you know? Yeah, it's always good to have a character that you can fall back on, so... Yeah, exactly. Always good. So you do have those days where you just have no idea what you want to draw. <laughs> I mean, when I have no idea what to draw, I just draw Lilith from Dark Stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> so not even OC, just, just a character you like a lot. Yeah, the, I feel that. I feel that. Too, just draw whatever character you like if you don't have any. OC. Yeah, no. if you got <laughs> if you got draw artist block, just draw Lilith from Darkstalkers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, draw any Darkstalkers <laughs> character at that point. I'm, I'm gonna love you forever if you do. <laughs> yeah. Man, I wish uh, I wish Kobe was still drawing. He drew a really cool Lilith from uh, he drew a really cool Lilith. He doesn't you haven't seen nothing from him in a long time. If yeah. if you know okay. who uh, Kobe Kobe Wynn is. Copy yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. been a while. I'm not great with names just yet. I'm not You're too still new to the community, Bacon. Yeah, I'm very new. But 
Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna get Piku's love, just draw Lilith from Dark Stalkers. As yeah. I'm sure a lot of artists here have. I know Cube Sona has. Um, that's all I got, really. I know a lot of the artists I follow. They definitely post a Lilith at some point. I'm like, who's this? Who's this um, character that keeps popping up? Morgan works too. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Morgan. Yeah, that one's another uh, one. Yeah. And yeah, um, so some of the little funny shortcuts with draw pile is that if you hold a, uh, let's see, is it that? No, it's not. it's. Hold on, I I was just doing this earlier. Yeah, if you hold a shift and space while moving your cursor up and down, you change the cursor size. Oh, that's really useful. Yeah, so you can just do that on the fly. Yeah, that's that is. I don't use that, but some people might be useful, especially for people who paint. Yeah. It's good for, like, coloring in, too, because if you just color in something pretty quick. Let's see, because this mm -hmm. eraser is too big, I can make it smaller, and then I can get more detail out of something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There we go. So I guess um, since we're drawing your comfort characters, I guess on that topic, uh, where did the design come from? What makes it fun to draw an OC? You know uh, what I mean, I mean it, <laughs> other than it's the thing that you made, so it's basically like your child. <laughs> yeah, and your brain just knows everything about how to draw it. So and that's definitely the the reason why it can be a comfort character. Especially yeah. if it's uh, uh, if it's a simple design, because some people can make OCs that are uh, really complex in design and difficult to draw. So yeah, there's there's that. Not not always fun to. I mean, might be fun to draw, but not easy to draw. Yeah. So, yeah there there is that for sure. Nice. It's good to have Let's a simple see. to draw OC if you. Yeah, it's also fun to just kind of have like something that you can easily just sort of sketch in a few shapes. Like mine is just kind of like square, two eyes, and then the little little things here. Yeah, that 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 is really simple. It's just like the little shapes that make it really appealing. Simple and effective. Yes, that's 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 what I mostly like looking for in my designs specifically. Um, whenever I do designs and stuff like that, I tend to fall back on like simple little shapes and simple little designs that are easy, but also kind of just like kind of like well, well appealing in their silhouette. Same thing with the colors. I kind of stick with the same few colors, like with this one I have main green then i go to like a little bit darker that's like the hair sort of leaf thing then let's see then i kind of go over here like this orange color is the separating thing then i have a yeah. yellow in there that kind of keeps it that bridges that gap between these two colors here and a little great. little bit of like this one to kind of bring in a darker tone it's a really, really good uh, uh, palette you have for that character. Now, what, yeah. ma what makes you say that, though, Piku? I mean, it, I, I feel like it works really well. Because like, uh, colors, like, colors are I difficult. Think. Like, just deciding what looks good in the colors. And that's, that's why I'm glad I got you here today, Piku. Because whenever you do uh, a draw pile or post it... All the colors you choose, they they make it really aesthetically appealing. Like, I mean, colors are really difficult to explain. I mean, yeah, it is difficult to explain. I'd say, well, the most important thing is definitely having some contrast between them. Like, if you don't have contrast between values, then quite often your brain i mean contrast between values which is light and dark basically is something your brain notices first from what i've heard at least so 
Uh, it, it it's one of the most important things in not only in character design but also in composition for sure. Yeah, a big part of designs and stuff like that is having compelling colors. And with colors, it's like very, very hard to pinpoint because people just kind of have their own way of coloring. Yeah. Color theory is very theoretical, as in the name implies. I see. There's a lot of different approaches that work. And things can still look good. So that's why you see a lot of different uh, styles in coloring that are really good and still work. No, right now, I like how easy you guys are making this look. Like just, just choose a canvas and just go with it and find what works. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what I do most of the time, usually. Like when coloring, when, I will get to coloring soon, but that's how it usually works too. I just try to choose colors that work well. Takes some time to learn how to see it, getting used to to uh, to being able to to see if it works or not. Yeah, yeah, it's that definitely a useful skill if you it's best to just study good artists who are good with colors uh, and learn from them. Yeah, it takes time to learn your own little coloring style. Like I've had a lot of people say that they like the colors in my things, but a lot of my colors are just intuitive. I just kind of pick them and it's like, "Oh, I th I like I like this one. This one looks nice. This one looks funny." <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's what I often do too. But it's good to have some knowledge behind it too. Yeah, at least some like thoughts to back up. Like, why'd you pick this color? Because if someone ever asks you and you go like, "Oh, it's just kind of messes with uh, how people see you," they kind of see you as like fumbling into your little your little zones or where you're at and stuff like that. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Having Let's fun see. drawing, creating a character. Now, I know, I know we touched over like why it's fun to draw your OC, but like where did they come from? You know, like why Cactus Girl and then why, why Noemi? Or how, I, I'm uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing her incorrectly. Uh, no, you, you pronounced it, pronounced it right. Uh, to be honest, I just, uh, when it comes to Noemi, I just came up with the name by looking for some baby names and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I found one that sounded pretty nice, so I just went with that. <laughs> uh, that I mean, that, that works, I guess. You don't have to come up with the name on your own. You just take some name you've heard and go. Yeah. Um, just, I, <laughs> just I, uh, don't give a generic name, like really generic, unless you want to. I mean, I mean, you could have a John, you could have a John yeah. OC, John, yeah. John Smith OC, yes, John Smith, Jane Doe, <laughs> right? Why, why so, cactus bacon? Um, one day I just decided, hey, I kind of want to make a cool little design, but I don't really want to make it human, but I kind of also want to make it human. That's, that's like my, my little mindset when going into this. And then I was like, I kind of thought around with a bunch of ideas and then I kind of came up with this one little quick design and then people seemed to like it. So I just kind of expanded on that and over time I redesigned it to something more akin to how it is now. Nice. And the name comes from a type of flower that grows on uh, that on cacti called Rebutia, which is her name. Rebutia. Yeah. It's, it sounds pretty banger, pretty metal, if I have to say. Rebutia. Cool. And then Piku. That sounds nice. And I noticed you got a uh, like birthday sign where a lot of people actually drew Noemi. 
for your, like your birthday. It was like tons of different designs for your character. Yeah. Where did you come yeah. up with your initial design with for her? Uh, I just did random girls and came up with my mind. It just work. <laughs> just it work just works. It does just. I mean, work. Uh, it's really difficult to say. I think I've seen. I probably seen some. Uh, like I got inspired probably by some, like, for stuff. Uh, a, a photo of a woman in a fur jacket or something like that, you know. And just can you never know when inspira- when inspiration strikes. Honestly, you can just sometimes it just comes to your brain and and it works. It's it's difficult to say, honestly. Yeah, like a lot of things just kind of come to you. You're like, oh, th- I think this little design aspect would be cool. And then just becomes something that's really, really cool. And part of something that everyone knows you for. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I guess just watching you guys draw right now is kind of like, it's kind of making like me want to draw or try it. Because you guys make it seem so casual, like fun to just doodle on a piece of paper. So I guess... uh a good question would be like, where does the motivation come from for drawing, and have, like, how do you get out of that rut? Like, if you ever end up with like art black. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it it can be tough to get out of an art block. Um, the main thing is just kind of well, when I didn't know what I wanted to do with my style, because like recently I didn't know where I wanted to go because I felt like I was stuck in a little plateau that I couldn't get myself out of. So what I ended up doing was I ended up looking at styles that I really enjoyed and replicating those. Okay. And kind of adding my own twist to them as I learned from them a little bit more. And then that's where I got my current thing from. So you found a style that you really enjoyed and it got you out of that, that kind of rut you felt like you were in. Yeah. Because it made drawing more fun, basically. Yeah, it it gave me, like, something, well, more to think about when I'm drawing instead of just going, like, well, I guess I'm just going to do this even though I don't really have too much fun with this certain style and I kind of mix it up and then it's like adding spice to a marriage. It it, it tends to change the dynamic a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's see. What do you think, Piku? What do you think about art black? Uh, I mean, it's it's a difficult thing to discuss. I mean, uh, generally when I feel like I'm, I have an art block, I just do a study or something, uh, or pro- just practice things that don't really require being to to don't really require you to be inspired. And after some time, your brain just gets on the right gear and it just starts working out usually, at least in my case. Nice. So it's, it's good to, to draw, even if you're in, in art block, things want to look good or want to work out, but even then I think you're still learning something when you're doing studies. Or, or just uh, just doing practices. Yeah. yeah, and when I'd say like when you're an art block, uh, a good way of going about it is not everything has to look good. You just have to have fun while doing it. So yeah, you can just draw yeah. something really stupid, and if you find it really funny, that can give you some joy while also drawing and getting those muscles flexed. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Uh, that's that's it's good to i mean quite often things just won't work out and there is nothing wrong with that if if you struggle with making things look good there is nothing wrong with that honestly <laughs> yeah it, it takes time at the beginning it takes time to to make something good yeah. And same thing with style. It takes time to figure out what you are when it comes to drawing and what you enjoy doing. Yeah, 
that, that too. Let's see here. Now, how long do you guys typically spend on a drawing, do you think? A couple hours, and then I typically finish. <laughs> I, my friends say I draw really fast. Uh, for me, yeah, I guess a couple hours too. Depends on... It depends on how things are working out. Yeah, it, it, it also does depend on how much of the idea you have in your head while going into it. Yeah, so, sometimes you can get stuck on a drawing and you won't be working out for a while. So those can take a lot of time. You, can, you can't get the pose right or you can't get the colors right. Yep. <laughs> Uh, what's the longest you guys have spent on a drawing oh god <laughs> uh, I need to think about that uh... <laughs> oh I have a couple ideas um, so when I was in my high school uh, AP art class last oh, kind of last year kind of two years ago it's hard to say because COVID messed up everything but um I had to do like paintings and acrylic stuff and I wasn't really too used to it. So I spent like weeks of class time just working on that. But as for like drawings like these, I don't know, maybe like a couple sittings. I don't, I wish I could spend more time on things, but I kind of just finished them. Uh, for me, uh, probably the most I've spent would be uh... About I I don't know honestly probably less than twenty hours. I don't know if I worked more on than that on anything. So yeah. What's what's more difficult, the uh, coloring part or the line art part? Oh god. Uh, <laughs> I'd say coloring is just kind of fun. It's like filling in the lines. Yeah, I mean, if the colors work out, then yeah. <laughs> sometimes, you, sometimes you can just have difficulties with getting the colors right. So that that can be frustrating, but usually I'd say the coloring part is more fun for me. It's coloring yeah, the coloring fun. part, yeah, because you can just kind of fill in some things and pick out the colors and everything. Yeah, exactly. You never get frustrated coloring too often? No, no, me, yeah. personally, no. I mean, I sometimes do, but it usually isn't for too long. Nice. That's why I, before, like, some people just uh, do a sketch and they do, they do the liner then, and only then they start coloring. I, I often just sketch the colors out. Because just doing really rough colors can help you see if they work well or not. Yeah, sometimes just uh, like even... you had, just like you do a sketch for a drawing. Yeah, blocking in those colors yeah. really does help too. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. So is this is this typically where you're at on a drawing at this at this time, Pico? Like if you it's been like. 30 minutes, you're typically at like this kind of base, depending on the pose for the most part? Uh, yeah, more or less. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it takes shorter, sometimes it takes longer. I mean, it depends if things are working out, as I said. Yeah. Now we're already sometimes moving on to colors. In, it can take a few hours before I get something good looking. Yeah, that's For the colors, I just go whatever works. Yeah. I, I try to find something that might look good with each other. Here, this blue and brown. I guess they look okay. Maybe I should make the blue a bit darker, more bluish. Would yeah. Say, would you say it's more difficult drawing in front of an audience? A little bit. It, uh, it, it I, can be I, kind I of daunting. Have, I, I forgot we have an <laughs> Oh, man, I, I my bad. To, I mean, I try not to think about that because it definitely can be more difficult. But, uh, I mean, 
I I guess when you when you draw on draw pal, you can draw with an audience. I guess because that's what it essentially is. Just draw with other people looking at how you're drawing. Yeah, I'd say draw pile is good yeah. if you just want to kind of do random stuff with your friends. Yeah, and if you want to get used to people looking at your drawing, that's definitely a good thing to to learn from. Uh, and if you're streaming, then yeah, the same principles apply basically. You just need to get used to people looking at your art being made. Yeah, it it's 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 even actually it's a lot more <laughs> difficult to draw when you have someone looking over your shoulder in real life. Because at oh, least yeah, with definitely, <laughs> <laughs> I hate doing that because they they just constantly just look over you. It's like they look at every single little thing you do. So you want to make sure every single little brush stroke or pencil line is absolutely perfect yeah and and sometimes they comment on that so that's even worse yeah <laughs> when they start commenting on uh, why did you do this why did you do that oh can you do this it's like what why are you drawing her like that are, why are you drawing her naked she has no clothes like no please <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just the anatomy please i need to put that in before i could put everything else Exactly, exactly. Yeah, drawing in front of real people is definitely more difficult than drawing on stream or on draw pile. So there is that. Okay, let's uh, see. Oh yeah, welcome to the Chillis art stream. Ever. Yeah, we're we're just going chill right now. <laughs> but that's kind of what doodling is. is so that is exactly yeah, what this, doodling is. This is, is. what draw pile is about. You don't really care about anything. Just doodle with your friends. Just come uh, up with something, work with it, and then just yeah, have fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's you all can, it really is. You can make amazing things in draw pile, but I don't know if that's what it's best for <laughs> yeah oh right it's more more or less for like connecting with like your friends yeah. definitely it's the like ease of it all that's that's what it's meant for yeah exactly and just catch without the worry and just have fun with your friends. Yes. Oh man, I'm so used to I'm not used to having two monitors. I have two monitors up right now. Two monitors is really useful for drawing. Yes. <laughs> you, you can have a Discord on one screen and Yeah, I have the chat open up on the other screen so I can see if anybody asks me a question. Nice. I just saw some fan art of your guys' OCs in the chat. Yeah, it's cool. I like <laughs> it's that one. pretty cool. <laughs> I pinned yeah, it if you want to see it. Shantae, talking about comfort characters. I've been drawing yeah. a lot of Shantae. Yeah, likely, definitely. I've been drawing a lot of Shantae. <laughs> I, I just recently got into it, so I've been drawing her a lot. I never... I mean, I never really got into games that much. I played one of them on Wii U, but I think I got stuck and never finished it. <laughs> oh so, yeah, I need to try give them a try again. I think the games are on sale right now. Yeah, oh. there's a Shantae bundle. I I have to check them out. The most popular game, uh, Pirate's Curse, which was on the 3DS, uh, yeah. I think it's like $10 right now, US. Sounds good. I, I'll check them out for sure. Yes, it's pretty cool. I've heard these games are really good. The most recent ones isn't that good because they kind of rushed it out and Apple um, 
stranglehold at the entire thing and kind of made it forced to be on their platform first and oh yeah they, they had that thing i mean I, yeah I, yeah that's unfortunate yes yeah, someone said fundamentals well when it comes to doodling you kind of just want to think of what <laughs> it's really hard to just come up with something but and you gotta just kind of think of what you want to draw. It's kind of how it is. And that's it. You just tap into your inner psyche and find out, like, what what am I today? What do I want to draw today? Uh, yeah, I mean, fundamentals are important, but when it comes to draw pile and sketching, like, freely, it, I feel like you just have to it's just best to rely on what you know already and what your brain just can do instinctively i think like you're just doodling with friends you don't have to worry too much about anatomy being right or uh, or i don't know or the perspective being yeah exactly, but if you exactly right too yeah, but if you, like, really want to know how to, like, come up with a good doodle, it's just, like, go rough. Don't worry too much about things. Just kind of do things that you think is cool and funny so you can go, like, like man, I just drew a random circle. What what can I do with the circle? I can just, I could extend it to make a body and go, like, ooh, da, da, da. Or I could just turn into, like, a funny little face. He's like, <laughs> I gotta say, you work fast, Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've had a lot of people say I, I work fast because a lot of my uh, my art is very shapey. I very I focus a lot on shapes, and that's that's what I like. I like shapes in my stuff. A lot of people tell me I work fast too, but. Compared to you, this I'm nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just the different you styles like, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I got a more simple yeah. style, so I can kind of put things out. Yeah, I guess. Lots of shapes that you just combine together. Yeah, it's all, it's all it's all about the shapes. I I I just like, especially with like what I'm doing right now with the hair. Shante's hair is always like. Like these sharp angles that I like doing. It's like one of the cool parts that I like about the design. Oh yeah, yeah. her design is really good. It's really fun to draw. Yes. Okay. Let's see. What? 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 Let's see. Dang, we're. Has it been an hour and fourteen minutes already? No, you guys started at eleven thirty. It's been forty-five minutes. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, thirty. I thought we started at 8. Some PST time over here. I like oh, what yeah. Piku's doing with the colors. Just to make it look more fun and vibrant. Thank you. Yeah, I, I like the orange hues that you use in the middle between the... As a like mid-tone between the blue and the white. Thanks, thanks. That's what I usually do for hair. One sec, I need to get the water. Yes. Okay, let's see here. Remember to drink water on stream. Yes, be become hydrated. D Detroit, become hydrated. Detroit, become hydrated. <laughs> okay, back. <laughs> Time for rehydration. <laughs> Going through the minute of uh, the everyday artist. Every minute of the everyday artist. Um, you open the right. file. You draw Shantae, you drink water. You you exist. Yeah. You live. <laughs> you laugh, you love. <laughs> yeah. Now where does the where does the fun come from, like drawing, do you think? Is it just like does it feel therapeutic at some point? Is it like um, what, what continues to make it fun for you? Just being able to create whatever comes to mind. Bringing your ideas to to life is definitely a big part of it, and I'd say self improvement is a really really big part of what makes drawing enjoyable. Definitely, 
just like any skill where you can improve yourself at it's really satisfying to see yourself make some progress yeah it's just nice to have like i have an idea in my head that i kind of think would be funny to draw and then you draw it you get that instant dopamine from just drawing the little funny idea that you had yeah yeah that's that too yeah i like how quick you guys make it seem to because it can be daunting when you're trying to draw something and you're like you've been doing something for hours and it looks like garbage but that's just based on like growing you know it's just yeah you know, kind of just output your work and uh yeah don't yeah. focus too too much on how it looks just you know just draw yeah exactly just just draw sometimes it will work out sometimes it you won't know if you don't try. Yes, yeah, son. Exactly. You won't know if you don't try. All these midtones and in, in Pico's coloring. I like the shading on it too. This is a good color for shading. Holy crap! I really Thanks. like tan skin because it gives you that ability to shade with purple. Hell yeah! Oh, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Um, you can just shade with whatever you want, honestly. Even if you make the skin like brighter, you can just shade with whatever you want, as long as you follow the the idea you have yeah. for with every other color. It's very fun, very cool. Uh, it's, okay. uh, in general, it's I just. In terms of shadows, I just think of one color that other colors go towards too, and and that's how I do shading. Most yeah, whatever. <laughs> whenever I just think of like, hmm, I need to take this one color, I put it into like slightly to the left of the color wheel, or more towards like the red and purple side, and then I just kind of lower that hue and saturation a little bit. Yeah, so yeah, coloring that, isn't, isn't just making something lighter or darker. It's like you can change the should, color wheel, like should, position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to change the hue because if, if you do something like, let's say this base color is the red, and all you do is just kind of go down darker into it, it kind of gives it this muddy sort of feeling to it and kind of messes with the whole thing. But if you take the same color and you go down into like purple or magenta and then you go down into there... You get a nice vibe with the colors. Oh, shit. And then it makes the shadow kind of pop out in, like, a very tasteful way. Yeah. They... yeah that's that's a useful trick, but uh, there are artists who, who don't really change the hue that much, and they make it work somehow. Yeah, you yeah. don't have to change the hue yeah. that much, but you just have to change it slightly yeah. so you don't get the full, like, black. Yeah, you can just go a tiny bit and... Uh, and uh, just just know that the shadow is not just making something blacker, just like a highlight is not just making something whiter. That, yeah. That's the important part. Oh, man. Now, what do you guys do to, like, experiment? Like, if you wanted to switch it up and try to, like, learn something new or, like, test yourself, like, what would you... How would you go gather references? Yeah, that that for sure you can. You you really want to just gather references for everything that you want to do, and then get that thing down. Yeah, like get a, a bunch of pictures you want to maybe imit imitate the style of or or the colors or something, and. Try to recreate what you see, basically. Yeah. In I, in, in, try to incorpor incorporate it in, into your drawing somehow. Yeah. Uh, I cannot stress enough that copying is okay as long as you're doing it for learning purposes only and you don't try to pass it off as your own. I've seen a lot of people yeah. who say, oh, no, I don't want to trace. I don't want to copy this one thing. But when you're learning, it's perfectly fine to do that. Yeah, exactly. If you need 
to figure something out. Even tracing is okay, honestly. Like, if you can't, it, it just makes easier to focus on one thing if, if you trace. Like, you want to see how this muscle goes. Maybe you just can trace it first and figure out how it goes, and then you try drawing it again on your own. Maybe. Yeah, it, it's tracing is okay as long as you learn from it and you don't be an idiot about it. Like, oh, this is actually mine, but it's it's not. It's, it's mine. It's I traced it. I traced it. I stole it. Yeah. It it can be useful if, if, as a learning tool for sure. Tracing is definitely a, a really big just, problem. Just just don't make your primary tool. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. that way you won't learn anything. It's good if you sparingly. Piku, I gotta say, you never changed the zoom on your camera this whole time. You just been at the uh, same like one hundred percent view, and did this all just from the same view. Yeah, I mean. I, I don't really, on Dropbox, I usually don't focus on details that much, so. Yeah, yeah. so it works to just be relaxed. Yeah, and... yeah, 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 it just works like that. I mean, I, I might go in a bit later, like zoom in a bit more, but uh, for now it works out. You hear and that chat? I... You, you don't have to be perfect. You just chill and hang out and just draw. do it. Look at that shit. <laughs> it looks great. Yeah. My God. Just for... it's, it's when it comes to drawing, it's good to focus on the whole first and then go into details. Yeah. That, that's what I typically like doing. I don't usually zoom in too much when I'm just drawing it, but when I want to finish it off, I zoom in and check everything out. Yeah, so you f focus on the important parts later. The face, definitely. I mean, depends on what you're drawing, but in most cases, it will be the face and maybe uh, the body parts you want to focus on. Yeah. If you're w working towards that sex appeal. Sex appeal, shout <laughs> out to sex call appeal. Callback, 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 callback. Yeah. Call back. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, put the details where you want the focus to be. Cause and that goes that... into compositional things and everything. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything you could tell someone about when they're like comparing themselves to other artists? Like, uh, don't. 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 <laughs> you're, you're your own artist, so comparing yourself to other people kind of gives you that feeling of like, oh, I can't get here, or I can't get here. It's yeah, I'm a, not, it, I'm, he's better than me at 19, oh no, what can I do? <laughs> yeah. Just don't compare yourself to others, compare yourself to yourself from a few months ago. That way yeah. you can see if you've improved or not. Yeah. It's it's good to look up to people, but don't compare yourself to them. Yeah, it's it's a healthy approach. It's best if you compare yourself to yourself. Yeah, because that way you can see that you're actually getting better, and not just see that you're not as good as that artist you really like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like putting yourself to unrealistic standards of like, oh, I'm not this yeah, artist, yeah, exactly. so I'm not good. But instead, if you compare it to yourself, then you're like, oh, I am actually improving in certain areas. I see a lot of yeah. people make that mistake. Yeah, a lot of people make that mistake comparing themselves to, to other artists. I mean, there is nothing like if you want to use that as an inspiration, then yeah, it's good, maybe. Like you, you can get inspired, you look at an artist and see how they do anatomy or something. And you think, oh man, I want to do that. And you start working on that part of of your drawing ability. Yeah. But comparing yourself in other ways is is not healthy, definitely. 
There you go. Can be really bad. Put you in an art block easily. Yeah, if you learn anything and take away anything from this one specifically, it should be that. Don't compare yourself to other artists. Have, have fun. Yeah. And just draw. This Jesus. Yeah. Inspiration just is just whatever you want it to be. Like just draw something and then do studies yeah. if you're like a serious black. Learn something if you have to. That'd be nice. Mix it up sometimes. Mix it up. And I like I really do like that we're getting to learn about colors today too because <laughs> Pico, your colors just make it look so much fun. I hate coloring. I, I sincerely hate coloring. Uh I hated coloring too, like four years ago, maybe. I hated coloring too, like with passion. I would do a line art and then, oh, I gotta color this shit. <laughs> and then you're like, my uh, line art looks so good before I colored it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, that, that's the problem. But if you have problem with that, just do studies, learn about color, like, Honestly, it's, it's it applies to any part of uh, of drawing, any fundamental, any fundamental. Like just if you're having a problem with something you don't like it, just try to learn it and understand it, and it will get easier and more fun to work with. Bacon, what are you drawing right now? A little man. <laughs> oh, there. A little man. I like that Piku can rely on two things, which is his OC, Noemi, and then also Lilith. And then Bacon, I like that you rely on Shantae and your OCs, as well as like new grounds, I guess. Yeah. What do you guys think is like the most, the best like source of information for an artist? It's just references, but like, where do you get those from? You know, like, what do you look? Uh, do you follow other artists and just see what they do? Like, is that the easiest answer? If you uh, know where to look, like a specific artist that you like, that's probably the best place to go. But if you don't know, then I'd say probably just go to like Pinterest and look for some cool stuff. Yeah, Pinterest is really good when it comes to finding references. Just add some pins and then it recommends you whatever you need yeah it's, i joined i joined pinterest stuff. recently and it, it constantly updates my notifications like i've only looked at a few things and it's like here are some more female poses for you here's some more uh drawing styles or whatever it just dumps it onto me i'm like okay man i'll fucking draw <laughs> like, it kind of kind of forces yeah, you pin pinterest can be really good when it comes to looking for re references Hell yeah. Mm. Okay. Here we go. Now, is there, oh. is there anything you say about, like, being self-conscious about, like, your art? I know don't compare it to other people, but, like, when you're learning, don't get upset at what you're drawing. Just put it out there. Now, and then just draw whatever, uh, like, comes to mind for the most part. So, whatever yeah. inspires you is pretty much the route that it takes so that's the beginner's starter kit right there for art yeah just l l learn the important stuff the things you don't know and try to have fun try to have fun now what made it fun for you guys in the beginning like you're just starting off like so speaking from actual real experience like in the beginning uh, it was just creating something right being able to put something out there I mostly enjoyed um, just kind of being able to create things like like oh I, I like this one thing I really like how this thing looks and I I got the little dopamine kick from being able to like replicate something like that. Do you think yeah. do you think it ever like isolates you from your friends in some way that you because you're trying to draw all the time? What if you don't have artist friends? Like does that isolate you from everyone else? Do you think? Um, mm. I I tend to mix it up when it comes to like drawing i spend time with my friends i spend time drawing i spend time drawing with my drawing friends and stuff like that that's perfect uh, i it doesn't have to isolate you 
I just, I just you know can for, draw with, I know you for, can draw on non-artist friends, but but uh, well, you, you need to find balance in your life. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like any other hobby. You can separate yourself from your friends with it, but you can just kind of mix it together and have a little bit more of a balance between the two. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, if anything, the stream, every everyone in chat should feel like they're able to draw now. <laughs> like, it's, it's as easy <laughs> as it seems. Anyone can draw. <laughs> yeah. A anyone can start. learn it. Anyone can, can draw. Anyone can get better at it. So... There's j just start drawing and and have fun. And have fun. Now, does it does coming up with your style? Does that take the same route? Do you think? Because I know from Bacon's experience, he just studied a lot of artists that he looked up to, and then finally, like after working with it for so long, found something that he really like clicked with him. Like, did that work for you too, Piku? You just uh, find your style that way. I mean, more or less. I'm mean, there is a lot uh, of like unconscious uh, choices i i probably make but i i see some cool artists and i take from them unconsciously but there's definitely some conscious decisions i studied uh, a bunch of different artists mainly like capcom ones like mishim rakino and uh, Angus. Nice. So uh, th these are big inspirations, and I took some parts from their styles. But it it's it's style is a really complex thing. It's a thing that comes from a lot of uh, a lot of different artists you like. And maybe some other experiences you have. There is that. It's not an easy thing to pinpoint or or a thing that I mean, you can come up with a style, but a lot of parts of your style just come naturally. I so, yeah. What you're saying is, is like there's a billion different avenues for an artist to take. Yeah. yeah, infinite. Infinite. You can really just go infinite. in any direction. You can go crazy. You can go pretty, pretty simple. Just draw yeah. you goons. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And post it to Newgrounds. You. you yeah. You yeah. yeah. Get get a thousand followers in one day. Do it. Yeah. Wait, bacon. What? <laughs> <laughs> just just do it. No followers don't matter. I thought we went over this. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, having people look at your art is important, right? Yeah, it, it, that's what we it, said. It, the numbers don't matter, but it's just funny to see the, the um, the milestones kick in. Like, that's yeah, pretty much it. That that it makes the brain feel good, but it's not that important. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having fun. Jeez, artist friends. Especially with draw pile. Look, we just taught you guys how to how to draw with your friends, or draw with other yeah, artists. Don't worry too much. Talk with other people. It's fun. I have um my own little experience from the art community, which is like they're really inviting. They're kind of like talkative people for the most part. Like a lot of the artists I've met, and I don't even draw really. So if, and I've been told that if you have someone that you look up to, you can reach out to them. Like if they don't get back to you, that's whatever. But you can always just reach out to the people that you look up to and see if you can't, like, you know, like, draw with them, I guess, on draw pile or find some way to to just get some advice or tips. Some some artists have their DMs always open for, like, yeah. you know, helpful. We are just people. Yeah. yeah. Artists are people. Artists are people, too. <laughs> and don't, don't forget that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, be nice to them. Jeez. Th that goes both ways. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can interact with artists, but also remember that they are people too. Don't ask for free art. Just don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Just yeah, don't. don't. Yeah, commission your local uh, artists. Unless you want to get yourself blocked. Yeah. yeah. 
You guys have a really good idea for visual novel. Can you do all the art for it, please? Can you, for no pay? I'll, I'll pay you an exposure. I'll pay no you pay. an exposure. Just never say that ever. <laughs> Not yeah. a good idea. Every artist's favorite word, exposure. <laughs> they love it. I will say that through interacting like with the art community, though, you do kind of open the avenue for being a little more creative or like inspired in some way. Because I like drawing other people's like characters. I'm not good at coming up with characters, so it's it's cool to find other people's like characters inspiring. Or it's it's nice to just have someone that can inspire you to draw at all. You know, and and sometimes yeah. that interaction is what forces that. It's like, oh, like we've been talking about art for so long. I just want to draw it now. Whereas, like, if you're on your own, it feels like you kind of got to force yourself in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. yeah. Having artist friends definitely can be inspiring. But also, don't compare yourself to them. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're going back to this one. <laughs> yeah, don't, no, be, no. don't worry. <laughs> If they're really good, don't worry, it's fine. It's everything's normal. They're just happy to be your friend, I promise. Oh man. Yeah. It's it's weird how many it's... artist groups I know that have like a lot of them have their own different styles and they're all really like talented, but they've never like shunned me from like being able to just like talk or chill with them, you know? Yeah. It's just it is what it is. It's it's an open community. Which I don't think a lot of people give enough credit for. How nice our community can be. It's because people don't... They don't tend to look into it too much. Most likely. It's all very yep. surface level understanding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They just see cool artists interact with each other and... Yeah, and they get they get really jealous like I do. And I'm like, oh man, I wish I could interact. And then I do. And then I reach out to everyone. And I come up with the art art events like this just so i can hang out with my favorite artists yeah <laughs> that's all this is <laughs> so that's the reason huh <laughs> yes yes i fooled everyone i get to hang out with my favorite artists now <laughs> but everyone else does too like it just benefits just interaction in general benefits so shout out to newgrounds just because it's interaction like that's what it is it's the community like the more you get into a community the more you can grow as a human being like, or creatively which I feel like the more you grow creatively, it actually grows you as a person too. But that's it's getting kind of deep. Sorry. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. art block, I've seen art block just destroy people's like, like mentality. Like it's once you yeah. art block can hurt. Yeah, like yeah. physically. <laughs> and yeah. mentally, and yeah. every single form. Every single form. Yeah, yeah, there are people who just stop drawing because of our block, and that's it. The end. That's it. Rip. I've seen. Well, I've seen a couple artists who who leave like for months. I've seen nothing from them, and then all of a sudden they'll they'll post something after like eight months, and they, more than likely, like one of their last posts is always like, "Oh, I'm uncomfortable with my style, or I want to grow, or I'm gonna take a break from all this and just focus on art." And uh, you don't see them for a while because. Stuff happens. I think uh, my biggest example of that is either Fumi, Fumi ninety eight. I forget who that is. They got a clown OC on Twitter. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. then Karen, Karen, Karen. It's like K H A R O N. They took a big break too, and I couldn't see nothing from them for. Ah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. So just Wonder. keeping keeping that art block away. Get get that yeah. out of here. Get. Get yeah. out of here. It's supposed to be fun. You like having fun, right? <laughs> yeah. You like fun, right? You, you like having fun. I feel like we're bullying people now. You like fun, right? Why don't you draw more? <laughs> Just do it. Do it. Oh, man. Um, have we, fun. We are nearing the 20 minutes left, Mark. Um, oh, we can get those questions in then. If anyone has questions, just at me the questions and I'll read through them. We'll see what we got here. Um, this is kind of a, a question that's brought up a lot. Uh, we spoke on Pinterest earlier. Beautiful Judd said, any good resources to learn fundamentals? Uh, so beyond Pinterest, beyond poses, 
uh, uh like maybe art YouTubers. Stars, YouTubers. YouTubers yeah, art streams. Art streams too. Yeah. Some some things you can pick up. I mean if you have a really basic understanding of something. You can pick up some things just by looking at other artists draw. So there is that. Uh, uh, what could I recommend? Now, is there any like bad resources? Because I feel like that's a that's a good uh, question. Bad too. resources. Uh, like, has there ever been anything that you feel like stunts people in their own growth? Telling people to just draw oh, and shit. not have. <laughs> You need to draw, but you also need to think about what you're drawing. Just doodling aimlessly won't exactly really help you much. Like even when I'm working in Drawpal, I still, I mean, uh, I still think about some stuff, and uh, that that's why I erase a lot. There is, it's good to have fun. I mean, but uh, there is some stuff that can just i mean you can just do this for fun from time to time but you can do that all the time yeah so um, that way you want to improve i see a lot of people uh, when they're starting out when people tell them to just draw it's kind of hard to say just draw because they don't know where to start with just drawing because they could just go like well i can i could draw a little smiley face but that that's as much as i can do but if you give them like somewhere to start, like a goal to work towards, and that's like their first goal, and that's something that's really good. Just giving them, giving someone a first little goal to start working towards. Like I want to draw this consistently, or I want to be able to draw this, or this, or this. I want to be able to color like in this sort of style. It's a good way of start of starting. Yeah, it, it, it's good to have. Uh, it's definitely good to have someone who can tell you what to do. Yeah. Uh, realism is pretty important, um, especially even if you're doing like cartoons like what I do. Uh, it's still important to know realism to be able to break the rules. Like yeah. you have to know the rules to break them. Like that sort yeah. of thing. You need to learn those fundamentals. Um, At least the basics. At least the like, basics, so then you can break them. That's what I've heard a lot about cartoony styles. Um, yeah. Cortet Dash G asks, "What's the best way to get your work out there when starting out?" Uh, um, Shill yourself a little bit and post to new grounds. <laughs> post to new <Yeah>. grounds. <laughs> and also, you can try finding maybe uh, some Discord communities. Uh, like yeah. That. Like this one here. Discord communities are pretty good for like just trying to find people and to talk to people about similar interests. Yeah, yeah. Like meeting other artists is definitely an important part of getting your stuff out there. I think. Nice. Um... You can just interact them with them on Twitter too. That that can work too. Yeah, yeah. replies are a thing. You can reply to things. Thing. Reply to your audience. I've heard that's important. Yeah, I, I, I like replying to people. You know. Especially when they give me like mean compliments <laughs> on me. This sucks. Okay, I, Five I need stars. To give you mean compliments. Yeah, uh... mean compliments. <laughs> <laughs> um Kevin asks, how is the journey like when it comes to becoming a creator and growing over time? I don't go to college and I want to learn art by myself. I'm looking to keep meeting, learning, and learning from artists I look up to. So what is it like? What is the journey like uh, growing over time, basically? It can be bumpy, yeah, <laughs> but it it's rewarding. Bumpy. Yeah, it, it can be frustrating. You You will just uh, don't look at improvements daily. That's for sure. You want. To, it's really difficult to see the improvement if you look at it daily. Like, it, it's not really a good measure. It's best to compare yourself to yourself from like a few months back because. Uh, Sometimes you might have a good day, sometimes you might have a bad day. 
drawing, you never know. And in general, it's it's not a good measure to just look at at sm small parts of your improvement. Just look at the bigger time periods because it's more easily measurable. Yes, yeah. not over the course of a week or a month. Like, give it some actual time, like before yes. you look at how you've grown or what direction you've taken. Because sometimes you won't feel like you're getting better, but you actually are getting better as long as you practice the right things the right way. Got it. Um, best advice you two have, Porter asks. Best advice you two have to share for any new artists. I feel like we've gone over that to be honest a little bit uh, yeah yeah like, like where you post your art don't compare yourself just kind of have fun with yeah. it but also learn at the same time build your own yeah. goals kind of set yourself up for that sort of thing and slowly work towards that um any z as any tips for being able to finish art faster uh study. speed doesn't find really a, find a simple style maybe yeah, speed doesn't really. I mean, it definitely speed comes with practice, so there is that. Yeah. The more you draw, the faster you'll get. You can't expect to be fast. Like, if you're still a beginner, then you won't be fast. You you'll get faster over time with practice and. And uh, yeah, you will learn what things you can just skip. And there is also that that your brain just l learns how to do some things uh, in your mind. Like uh, a lot of good artists don't really need to uh, construct anatomy and stuff like that. Yeah, they, they, they can just kind of see that, it millions of times in their head on paper so they can do that in their heads yeah there you there's go. that there, well, there's that um yeah, i got another question would you mighty good tales ask would you recommend doing figure drawings to learn anatomy uh not figure. i mean there is some anatomy you can learn and pick up from figure drawings, but figure drawings, I think, are more about uh, learning the poses and gesture. I mean, when I mean, it, it can help you pinpoint some uh, tiny bits, but it, I'd say it's better for correcting your knowledge you've learned from other robots. Yeah, you can I... just learn anatomy from from the figure drawing because some things you will probably get wrong. I say figure drawing is more of a reassurance of what you know instead of learning what you know. Yeah. There you go. Um, Ink, LOL, Inky, who I think is Inky Studios on Newgrounds. I think I recommend recommend recognize them they said should i post doodles like, yeah should you post doodles yeah uh, yeah if you want i mean if you, you like you the doodle why not but, but if you doodle a lot and you think they're pretty cool then i mean in general it's it's good to find a balance between just doodling and uh, making finished work because it, it, I know a lot of people just try to draw one thing and finish it. It's I don't think it's a really good approach because, uh, well, you, you just you don't learn as much through through working on a thing and finishing it uh, as much as you could learn uh, from doing a bunch of doodles. At least. Uh, that's what I think. Yeah. Of course, it's good to learn how to make a finished work, but I'd say you it's good to doodle more than 
do finished works. You just need to find the right balance. The right yeah. balance. I know a lot of artists where it's not important to like post everything you draw. It's kind of nice to have like a, a backlog or to just keep things to yourself sometimes. So it just depends on if you want to put it out there, I guess. Or you could just schedule them out, you know? That way you get a lot of work coming out if you wanted that. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Um, Matthew X 5 asks, is there any way to have a consistent art style? I feel like every time practice. I draw, I don't draw the same me. way. <laughs> practice? <laughs> yeah. It's easy. There you go. Practice. It. It, it's it's a little bit more than just practice, but there's a lot to keeping a consistent style. It's it's not really too important when you're basically just starting out. So only really important once you get to like the uh, the levels of like industry individuals where you have to keep a consistent style for a project or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that does that that does make sense. Because uh, a lot of I know a lot of animators. I know Nick Cantor, who I think works for an animation company. Yeah, in animation, you definitely need to be good at consistency, at consistent and at keeping the proportions consistent. And stuff. um, meme shell asks, should I post trace drawings to get some advice? Just make uh, sure that you. Credit that the, people know yeah <laughs> that's a difficult one because when you're tracing it's i mean where's the advice really at you know like yeah you know, I mean, yeah it's you, uh if you're drawing something someone else made then the advice is technically for the artist that made it so really yeah. it's about what yeah, you yeah. learned from tracing it is important. I'd say the trace I mean, thing shouldn't really be posted too much. Like, I, mean, if, it, I guess it, if you want to show people, I I'd say it's more about uh, if you want to trace something, it's more about uh, learning something that you have a vague idea of but can't exactly figure it out. Then you can just maybe go into tracing, like. To figure out the proportions an artist uses, and maybe you want to draw similarly, or yeah. like if you want to figure out uh, like a muscle or something, the way it goes, or maybe it, it, it's I, I'd say that's what tracing is good for. There isn't really much you can ask for advice for in tracing. There we go. Yeah, it's a difficult topic because it's really mainly what you take away from it. Like, what did you learn from tracing that? Because yeah, yeah. Best guy five ninety. This is probably we got six minutes left. Best guy five ninety. Uh, asked, what are your two inspirations on your art styles? Like, what are so for you two? What are your uh, inspirations for your art styles? I think I think we went over Piku's earlier, but just uh to repeat that would probably be nice. Yeah. Yeah, for me, that's definitely Capcom artists like uh, Kino Nishimura and Pengas, uh, Akiman, uh, who else? Uh, there's a bunch of Twitter artists I like. like. Uh, uh, Gloss, maybe. Mm. There you go. Cool. Capcom is a big, big inspiration. Jeez. Yeah. You Capcom is an inspiration to a lot of artists. Yeah, I, I like their stuff, for especially the reason. stuff for MVC3 and MVC2. Yeah, yeah. Those are really good. What do you think, Bacon? What are your inspirations? My main inspirations are mostly Studio Trigger. A, lo a lot of artists yeah, say yeah, that, yeah. but I like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo Yoshinari, Hirohiko, Imaishi. That, like, the blending between Western and Eastern animation styles is just great. I, I love both of them. So, yeah, Penny and Stocking. A lot of people say that my OC reminds me of Penny and Stocking, which is very, very honestly true. <laughs> yeah, th those I are my inspiration, too, for sure. They're really good, really good stuff. 
What do you think is the most important thing to take away from your inspirations? Like the way they draw or the way they use colors? It's is it up to you for the most part. How you enjoy their styles. Yeah. Is is how I'd say. So what you try to figure out what about it like makes it so appealing to you? Yeah, and then you yeah, can yeah. start thinking about things a little bit more critically. That's perfect. So a, a lot, of, a lot of things to do with art are subconscious, and, and you got to figure out who you are, your experiences, and like what you enjoy, and you kind of pour that out onto the canvas and do it so many times to where you can utilize your style in a way that makes sense to you. That's yeah, it is. Like uh, art is a representation of you at the end of the day. So. So. There you have it. Who are you on the inside? Then you can draw. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> what have you become? What have you been through? And then and then just draw. Just yeah. Puke all over the canvas and something will come out eventually. Um, what are the questions we got here? This a lot of these questions we kinda answered during the stream, so I'm not I'm not trying to reiterate too much. Um this this is a a relative question. Uh, Phelps asks, does realism matter at this point when you get good at drawing? Like, realism? Doesn't everything realism start, always matters. Doesn't everything yeah. start from anatomy? Like, in some way? It still matters. It's... Yeah, it... Your, your art is still based on it, so... You yeah. need to have a good grasp on realism. Yeah, you gotta have a good grasp on reality. Can't be off in fantasy yeah. land. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, that's about it, guys. We got two minutes left. Let's go over these these cool little drawings that we have here. Bacon went wild. <laughs> Bacon went really wild. Yeah, Bacon just went. Just went wild. You have. <laughs> there are two kinds of <laughs> artists. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about yeah. bacon? What about Pico? I can just fill the half of the canvas and <laughs> right. like I have all this space, I'm gonna use it. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully people learned how to use draw pile today. That way, you know, get your friends together, draw some silly stuff. That'd be cool. Yeah. You could also kind of go into like these little side areas and then change up the size of the brush and the opacity and everything so you can get blocks. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And um, Piku, would would you say that is what you consider like a finished drawing, a finished doodle? Um, I mean, definitely. I mean, some of them are even less finished. I just it just uh, depends on if I feel like working on them more or not. Sometimes I just I even do overpaints in draw pile slightly so nicely done all right people uh thank you everyone for showing up this has been bacon and piku or piku 184 if you're looking for them on new grounds um this has been draw pile as well as quick little doodles we've gone over like kind of the most relaxing art session you could imagine and we went into what it means to do art and how to improve and where to start so i hope everyone here feels like drawing now because this this just made it look so easy to experiment and do what you want and have fun. Next up, yeah. we got Dog Owl and Tater Man. Thank you, Piku. Woo! Thank you, Bacon. I appreciate yeah. you guys. I'm gonna... <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Um, I, I would love feedback on the event, how you guys think it went. Um, yeah. I'll gather all that later. So thank you guys. I'll move on to the next VC and open that up to the public. Okay, yeah. Later. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Come on, everybody. <laughs>